Thanks for watching. This is a tutorial in the Roll and Cut Studio on how to create a lettering pattern and the options that you do have within your lettering pattern. In order to create a lettering pattern within the Roll and Cut Studio, you can utilize any true type font that is stored on your Windows computer. On the left hand side, I will click on the text icon, which is a capital A. Once I left click on this, my cursor turns from an arrow into a text tool. I place my text tool over on top of the canvas and I left click. Once I left click, I now have a line indicating where I can insert my text. Here I will just go ahead and type in Roland. When I hit enter, I can go to another line. I will then type in cut, space, and then studio. By default, my lettering does go to the Arial font. My lettering is selected and I can tell that it is selected because it is blue. My outlines are blue. If it's not blue, I can always go to the cursor select tool. I left click on that and make sure that I am left clicked on the whole lettering design. I can tell that I am left clicked because it is blue outlines and I have the four black nodes surrounding. If it is not selected, you can tell that it is black lines and there's no um, bounding box around it. I'll left click on Roll and Cut Studio and if I'd like to change my settings such as the font, the size, any of the spacing, what I can do is go up to Format. If I left click on Format, I'll scroll down to Font, left click on Font, and here it takes me to my properties. In my lettering properties, I can change the font, I can change other settings such as height, spacing, and actually different text paths. What I am selected on, I'll go ahead and move this off to the side so we can see, I'm selected on all of Roland Cut Studio. If I'm changing the font, I change the font for everything selected. In order to change the font, I just left click on the drop down arrow and you can see all my different fonts that I do have stored in my Windows computer. It does have true type fonts and when I go ahead and select a true type font and left click, it will show me a, um, a preview of what that font looks like. I can even come in here. I can even use different fonts that allow for symbols. And that's the nice thing about using the true type fonts. Again, these are any font, this is any font that's stored in your Windows system that is a true type. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and change it to Old English. When I change it to Old English, you can see my preview over here. I can also change the boldness of that font and as I use the scroll bar, I'm just left clicking, holding and dragging, you can see how bold I can get it. Once I get to an area or a setting that I like, I'll go ahead and click OK. Once we click OK, we can see what we have changed in this lettering design. In this lettering design, all I've changed so far was the font as well as the boldness. If I'd like to go in further and change more properties, what I can do is always go back to my properties. With this selected, you can tell again it is selected. I do have my notes surrounding it and it is selected blue. I'll go up to format and scroll down to font. I want to go back to my font properties. Left click on font and in here we can see that our font is Old English with that boldness so you can see the options that I chose before. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the text height, which is right underneath the font. Within the text height, it is one inch, but I want you to look down here and that is according to the baseline. There's a baseline as well as the descender line. The baseline, you can see, is highlighted here in red and it is the, um, the distance between the baseline and the top of the capital letter. Your descender line, if I left click on that, that's going to be the height of the lettering all the way below the baseline to the descender line. Most people do 
um, the height on the baseline uh, as most of our letters especially our capital letters will fit above that baseline. If I'd like to change the height according to the baseline I go ahead and highlight that and I can go ahead and change that height. Once I change the height let's go ahead and click OK and now you can see that it changed on my canvas. So again you can see the changes that I've made on my canvas. Let's go back and change some more. So we'll go back to format and font. I left click on font and in here we're going to talk about the width, the character spacing, as well as the line spacing. I'll go ahead and move this off to the side so we can see. The width, um, according to our font, each letter has a certain width. If you'd like to make each letter smaller in width or more narrow, we can take that and make that a percentage. If you'd like to make it more narrow, you can go down in percentage. If you'd like to make it thicker or wider, you can go up in percentage. So in this instance, let's go ahead and go down to 80%. Just to see what it looks like, let's press OK. When I do that, you can see my letters are more narrow than they were. We're going to go back up to Format, go to Font. When I left click on Font, let's go ahead and go to the Width, change that to 120, now press OK, and you'll see our letters are wider. So we can see how we can make each letter more narrow or wider. We'll go back up to Format, left click on Format, scroll down to Font, and left click on Font. The character spacing, that is going to be the spacing between each character, and 100% is going to be based on how that font is composed according to each object or each letter. We can make the spacing wider or closer together, and that's by going down in percentage or up in percentage. Going down in percentage, you're going to make each letter get closer to each other. So in here, let's go ahead and type in 80. We'll go ahead and press OK. And after we press OK, you can see that our lettering will now get closer to each other. Let's go up to Format. Go back to Font. We'll take the character spacing. And with that character spacing, we'll go up to 120. We'll go ahead and press OK. When we press OK, our letters get more spread out from each other. We'll go back to Format, scroll down, and left click on Font. The line spacing, that is going to be the distance between each line of spacing. It's going to be based on a percentage, and again, if you want closer spacing between each line, between the Roland and the Cut Studio, we'll go down in percentage. Go ahead and press OK and you can see it gets closer to each other. We'll go to Format, go back to Font, left click on Font, and change that higher in percentage. We'll press OK, and you can see that it gets further apart from each other. We'll go ahead and move this, left click, hold, and drag, and move it back onto our material. Again, we're going to go back to the font properties. We'll go to Format and then Font. And in the font properties, we do have aligning tools. We can align left, align right, center, or justified. If I use the drop down arrow next to the align, we can go ahead and click on center. It will align at center with each other, each line of text. So we'll go ahead and press OK then go back to Format, Font, you can write Justify it, or write Align, I'm sorry, press OK, and you can see that Roland and Cut Studio is aligned to the right, we'll go back up to for Format, Font, and then Justify, and you'll see our letters get quite spaced out, especially at the top, so we'll press OK, and we'll go ahead and left click on the fit to screen icon at the top. I left click on that and now I can see all of my letters. You can see everything uh, lines up to the left and the right.
and our spacing is applied uh, as necessary. We'll go back to format and every time I go back to format I am left click selected on my roll and cut studio. We'll go back to font and we can also align this with a curve. When we align this with a curve um, we can align the lettering bottom to the baseline, center to the baseline, or top to the baseline. Let's go ahead and see what bottom looks like. When I left click on bottom and press OK, both Roll and Cut Studio does get um, selected and we'll go ahead and fit this to our screen. We'll bring both of them up and they're both based on the same arc line. When they are left click selected with your cursor icon, you have two arrows, one pointing up and one pointing down. As I move my cursor over the arrow, it turns into a two-way arrow. When my cursor is a two-way arrow, I can then left click, hold and drag and change that arc. Then my lettering will fit to the arc. I can do that from the bottom as well. When I left click, hold and drag, that will change the arc. After I let go of my left click, you can then see that my letters will snap to that. I also have arrows pointing to the right and to the left with those that will actually um, change the width of my arc. If I left click, hold and drag, that will stretch it out or squish it together. Once I let go of my left click, it will then snap to it. Depending upon which side I um, left click, hold and drag on, it will drag it from a certain side. Or, you know, drag it from the opposite side. If I hold the control key, it will do it from the center. Let's see what the other baselines look like. So with those selected, we're going to go up to Format, scroll down to Font, left click on Font, and here we'll go ahead and choose the alignment type from bottom to center so our letters will strike through that baseline. We'll go ahead and press OK. After I press OK, you can see how that changes the way that our letters are spread out on the baseline. Again, we'll go to Format, Font, change that to top, left click OK, and you can see how our letters now fit on there. And I'm just moving that to get back onto our, you know, material uh, or onto our workspace. We're going to go back to format and go back to font. I'm going to go ahead and deselect align with curve and bring these back to 100%, the line spacing 100%, the width at 100 percent and we'll go ahead and center a line. I'm also going to change this to a more um, to a more script font. We're going to scroll up here and we're going to find um, brush script. This is very commonly used. Um, we'll left click on brush script and now you can see Roland changes. I also am going to take my character spacing down a little bit, maybe to 90%, so that my letters get closer together. With this option down here at the bottom called Merge Overlapping Text, that will allow my lettering to be all merged as one. So each letter is not, um, you know, is not its own piece. Usually that option is allowed to be selected or deselected if you have your boldness all the way down to normal. I'll go ahead and click let, let this go without merge overlapping text and we'll see what the difference is. So I'll go ahead and press OK and when I do that, I'm going to bring this down into screen. You can see how the O goes into the L and um, the O will actually be cut as one piece. If that happens, you'll have this little negative piece that comes out. 
So what we want to do is make sure that they're merged together. And remember that our character spacing is at 90%. So I'm going to go up to Format and go to Font. There's our character spacing at 90%. I'm going to go ahead and click on Merge Overlapping Text. I'm going to bring this off to the side and you look at the O and the L. As soon as I hit OK, they're merged together and we don't have any breaks in there. So this is ideal for text that is going to overlap. We'll go back to Format and Font. And you can see also, too, that that's, that's good for when you bold your lettering, too. Let's say I take this to 100% and then click OK. Even though it's at 100%, it's bold, um, but it still connects, and we want that to um, be fluid with the cutting. We don't want separate letters. So we'll go back to Format, go to Font, and in here we have covered all the different settings within the Format, uh, the format tab at the top. If I go ahead and press OK, with this selected you can see you can quickly get to some of the settings by going up to Format and Style. You can standard, bold, italicize, or bold italic. Once I left click on a style, you can see how it changes on my screen. If we click on other, it allows me to go back to the format tab and go in and change uh, the settings about the uh, about the lettering design. I'll go ahead and left click OK. Now we do have the other settings in there that we can quickly get to. So with Roll and Cut Studio selected with the left click I'll go to Format, Line Alignment. This is where you can change your line alignment really quickly. Align left, Format, Line alignment, center, we already had that. Align right, format, align, and justify. We can also get to the line spacing, and the line spacing is going to be between the Roland and the Cut Studio. So if it's 70%, we're going to make that smaller spacing. Go back to format, line spacing. If I make that 120%, it's going to be uh, more spaced apart. We'll go to Format. You can also do your character spacing. Let's get that line alignment, the line left. We'll go to Format, Character Spacing, and we'll do 70 or 80. Let's do 80%, and you can see how that overlaps. Now when it overlaps, see how that merging option is not selected. So let's go to Format, Font, we're going to merge overlapping text, and press OK. When it does that, now you can see that our text is merged together. Format, Character Spacing, let's go up to 120, and it spaces each letter further apart from each other. If you would like a different value, you go to Format, Character Spacing, and then we can click Other. It takes us to that Format tab, and in here we can change that. And that's going to be your character spacing. So we'll go ahead and press OK. Now the other option under Format, if I left click on Format, is Properties. It takes me to the same type of properties that I saw earlier. Um, the size and shape, position, and format. We've been mainly focusing on the format and the format tab is going to be more geared towards the the lettering uh, the lettering designs. We'll go ahead and press OK and that's how we can quickly create a lettering design and those are the majority of the font settings that we can use. There are other things that we can do with fonts to create different looks and effects. Please look at our other tutorials for that. Thanks for watching.